فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُمْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاهُ And even though you cannot see your Lord, surely He sees you. The last ten nights, my brothers and sisters, these are not nights where you allow your children to go and roam the streets. These are not nights upon which that you just allow your wives and your household to just waste those nights. These are nights, my brothers and sisters, where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would wake up, he would tighten his waist sheet, and he would worship Allah, and he would wake up his family to do the same. He would wake up his wives, he would wake up his daughters, he would encourage the believers. Not as many of the people do in our times. They regard the last ten days of shopping days. These are days of shopping malls and marketplaces. And the 24 hour shopping and playing on the internet. This is how these ten nights have become. These are not the last ten nights for folly. And playing and amusement. These are not the last ten nights of surfing the internet. And playing on YouTube. These are not ten nights, my brothers and sisters, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is neglected and forgotten. You forget Him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forget you, meaning that He will abandon you. So be remindful of Allah and be mindful of Allah. Do not be of those individuals who waste their days and waste their nights. As you find from the habits of the Muslims, fathers who don't know where their children are, Mothers who don't care what their daughters are getting up to. And this is the month of Ramadan. A Muslim should be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the whole of his life. But more so in the month of Ramadan, he should be aware and astute. He should be mindful and concerned. Where is the enjoining of the good and the forbidding of the evil in our households? How are we with regard to our children, our daughters, our wives, our sisters? How are we with regard to our sons? How can it be possible, my brothers and sisters? Now when we look at the statistics of the police in the month of Ramadan, that we find in the Muslim areas, that there is more antisocial behavior in the month of Ramadan than outside the month of Ramadan. How is that even possible? How is that even possible that this is our children? These are people coming from outside into our areas and into our communities. How is it possible that you send your sons to the masjid and instead they are roaming the streets all the way through the Qiyamul Layl, the Tarawi prayer? How is that even possible in the month of Ramadan? In the month when we should have more concern and more looking over our children like the Messenger of Allah. When he stood up in the night, he didn't say, it's just for me and forget them. And forget my wife, forget my children, forget my grandchildren. How was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Look at the hadith. That he would get up in the last ten nights and he would wake up his family. What do we do? How are we as it relates to this affair? So if this is the behavior in the month of Ramadan from fathers, from mothers from guardians over there, over those whom they are responsible for, then how is it going to be outside the month of Ramadan? The month of Ramadan in which the devils, they are restrained. Then after Ramadan, what's going to happen? In the month of Ramadan, where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that every night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees people from the hellfire. Every night in the month of Ramadan, individuals, because of their sins and because of their misdeeds. That they were under the threat of Allah's punishment. That it was for them the hellfire. But because they entered the month of Ramadan. And they were sinful. They were impious. They didn't fear Allah. They spent the whole of their year sinning. Ramadan came and they said, no, this Ramadan I'm going to make an effort. This Ramadan I'm going to turn to Allah. This Ramadan I'm going to worship my Lord. So they entered the month of Ramadan. They rectified themselves and they rectified their wives and they rectified their children. 
They took them by their hands and they walked them to the masjid. They sat with them in the durus that have been taking place in this masjid every night. In Masjid al-Salafi, in small eating every night. And they said, no, you will sit and you will listen to that student of knowledge. And you will benefit just like we are benefiting. So they entered the month of Ramadan in this state. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave them their sins. Forgave them their shortcomings. Forgave them that which they forgot. And that which shaitan led them astray in. So by the time Eid came, that these were individuals whose sins had been wiped away. So how wretched is that individual who enters the month of Ramadan, exits the month of Ramadan, and he is even worse than when he entered. How wretched. And how wretched is that father. How wretched is that mother. Who has no concern for her daughters. No concern for her sons. How embarrassing upon the Muslim community. The Muslim, the Islamic mosques and community centers are receiving messages saying that please control your youth that are roaming the streets after the, after the prayer in the mosques. And they are banging on doors and running away. They are breaking into cars and they are loitering upon the streets. Ramadan. Ramadan, my brothers and sisters. What benefit has Ramadan brought to you and your family? We're looking overseas what's happening 7,000 miles away. We're looking at who's getting killed and where the bombs are falling. And people at your own doorstep have no concept of Iman, have no concept of Taqwa, have no concept of what it means to do righteous deeds. You want to collect petitions and do a jumble sale for what's taking place 7,000 miles away? And in your own house, in your own household, your own children have no concern for Islam and the deen and righteous deeds. They have no concept of what is Tawheed and what is Iman and what is Aqeedah and what are righteous deeds. In our own homes, and we're worried about what's taking place in home 7,000 miles away. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu quwa anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Oh, you who believe, save yourselves and your families from the hellfire. Look what the ulama and the mufassirun say about that. We're not driven, barakallahu feekum, by CNN and BBC. Our aqeedah, our manhaj, our methodology is not driven by them. Our agenda is not driven by them. And nor those who are drowned in politics and siyasa. Our aqeedah, our manhaj is driven and founded upon the kitab and the sunnah and the way of the salaf of this ummah. Pay attention to what is taking place in your own homes. Save yourself. The ulama say meaning begin with yourself. Begin with yourself. Where did the messenger begin? Who did he go to? Khadija radiallahu anha and his wife. Look at those who the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought into Islam. Began with his family. Who did he call to first? Who did the, whom the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who did he gather around him first? Those who were close to him. First and foremost. Does that mean we have no concern for what's taking place in the ummah? Of course we have concern. But not at the expense of burning our own house. That we are drowned in sin. That we are drowned, our household, our children, our daughters, our wives. They are drowned in sin. Our own house is burning down. And we want to pour water on someone else's house. There is no difference amongst the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah in this affair. Begin with yourself. Rectify yourself and rectify your family. Rectify your neighborhood. Rectify your community. Then rectify the nation. And the ummah itself will be rectified with that attitude. That's for our tarbiya. Ramadan, my brothers and sisters, a time for reflection, a time for ibadah. A time to turn to Allah and make dua for those who are suffering. From the Muslim brothers and sisters around the world. But at the same time, not to be led astray by emotion. Not to be led astray by the agendas that are not set by Ahlul Sunnah, but rather they are set by Ahlul Bid'ah. Be careful, ponder, think, reflect, 
Because what is happening in those places could happen to you. Are you going to be ready with Iman? If your soul was to be taken tonight, how would you face Allah? How would you even answer for this Ramadan? Concern for yourselves first. Make dua for others. Send sadaqah to those who are in need. Yes. Because this is the month of sadaqah also. As the Messenger of Allah, as Ibn Abbas said, radiyallahu anhuma, indeed the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the most generous of people. And he was never more generous than he was in the month of Ramadan. Generosity first and foremost to ourselves, meaning our children, our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our communities, our neighbors. Why do you think the ulama, they say the zakatul fitr is first and foremost in the communities amongst you? And zakatul mal is first and foremost in the communities that you live. When Mu'adh bin Jabal was sent to Yemen, he said, take their zakat from their wealthy and distribute it amongst their poor. First and foremost, those who are around you, and then those who are outside of you. Making dua for the whole of the ummah, because the whole of the ummah is like one body, as the Prophet ﷺ said. This is how the person of sunnah thinks about his religion. Barakallahu feekum. 